understand that. It just seems to me like, how can you continue a battle that nothing, you know, that you had nothing to do with? And, you know, it, like you said, if it, it's been started like when, when uh, my buddy Josh's grandparents, it, it happened to them. But like I said, I, it, to my best knowledge, it never happened to us. We, we you know, grew up in the same place. You know, we, we you know, hung around the exact same people. We weren't treated any different than the white kids. And I just have a hard time with it now when I go home and see him that now all of a sudden he's, you know, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's a, I, you know, I, I don't even have a word. But he's what? What, what? what is it he's doing? He's, he's saying just, something about racism? Yeah, and it, it, that it's, you know, it, it's, he's been, you know, it's been in his family for years, and, and, and so now he's got an attitude, even against some of the guys we hung out with when we were little, and, you know, he just brings it up, and it's, you know, like I said, until we were 17, 18 years old, it never happened to us, but he's m making it sound like he's got to, uh, you know, take over a fight that maybe his grandparents, you know, had a long time ago. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's look at your uh, associate, Josh. Uh, could it could it be that what he's saying he's not making it up and he's not talking about the past could it be possible that he's talking about something he's looking at right now and that what he is saying is that he sees it but that you don't could that is that possible absolutely well see that could be the case now, it could be, like you said, that he's making it up, but I don't think he's making it up, because I see it, too. And I've always seen it. I've never been in a situation where I didn't see it. Now, if I was looking for it and it wasn't there, then that's something different. And I've heard people say that, saying, well, I'm, look I'm looking at the same thing that you're looking at, but I don't see what you see. And I say, yes, I know. That's the treachery of the way racism works. That sometimes you can be looking at it, and I have this in the book that I wrote. In racial matters, many look, but few see. See what? See what they're looking at. You're looking at it, but you don't see it. Like an optical illusion. But if you're constantly looking for it, then, I mean, that's like they say. No, but looking... you can only see it if it's there. Otherwise, you are making it up, in which case nobody should do that. Well, that's what I'm saying. But you're telling me uh, just a second ago that you look for it. Well, if you're looking to, to see if something is racist, you're constantly, you, you know, you're, uh, you got blinders on. You're looking for it, and you'll take any little, you know, uh, section of uh, conflict or whatever and say, oh, that's racism. That's, that's not because of, you know, his bad attendance. That's racism. Because that's what you're looking for is what it sounds like. But I will only, but see, the thing that I claim that when I do look for it, I see it because it is there but it's not supposed to be there that's the key it's not supposed to be there but you're looking no matter how much no matter how hard i look i'm not supposed to ever find it because it's not supposed to be there it's, the racism should not exist that's the whole point just like cancer should not exist see now i can i can look past cancer you know i can not recognize it deliberately or I can recognize it deliberately, but I make up my mind that I'd rather not think about it, so therefore if I don't think about it and I'm not feeling the pain directly at that moment because I'm laughing about something, like a cancer patient has laughed, but the cancer patient still has cancer. See what I mean? So racism is the same way. Black people laugh all the time. They're the laughingest people in the world, collectively. Nobody laughs like black people. In fact, there's more jokes made about laughing black people than anything else. Even in the old days, when it was right in your face, this thing called racism, black people laugh more then than they do now. Black people were, were the biggest jokesters because they were trying to hide the pain. That's why. But over a period of years, they laugh less and less as the pain began to go away because they were laughing at the pain. They were trying to laugh off the pain. And now a lot of us try to put on the blinders to not see what is causing a world problem. Now, a person can look at President Obama and say, he doesn't really have a problem like 
President Obama said himself, said, I'm trying to get health care for the people that don't have it. See, I have health care, me and my whole family. I will never have to worry about health care. I will get top of the line health care. I already know that. He said, I'm trying to get it for the people that don't have it. I think he said, so if you're talking about me individually, he said, yes, I got health care. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not supposed to be concerned about other people not having it. See what I mean? So racism is the same way. There are some people who say, well, I've been able to skirt it, and I've been able to get by, and I've been able to do this in the neighborhood that I was brought up in. I was able to shield myself from it. But see, the fact that you shield yourself from it means that it's there. And it shouldn't be there for you to shield yourself from it. I mean, that's the whole purpose, because when you try to move away, just like in the case of your friend Josh, when you try to reconnect with him, he's been hit by it, full force, and his behavior shows it. And that saddens you, but that's a fact. And the reason it's a fact is because he ran into it when he just moved just a little bit, and it hit him full force, really. It had him full force all the time. And that's when it's really painful. Um, so are you saying that you have never been mistreated because you're not white? Not that I know of. I mean, I've oh, had okay. things with you know, many people. And I mean, granted, there's always some bonehead, but that, you know, that, whether he's black or white, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I've come across, you know, boneheads, but I find my, myself finding more of my own, quote, brothers that would do me wrong more those more so than the white guys that I you know that I hang out with and I can and I can see why that would be because that's the thing that's the effect that racism has the very fact that when you interact with black people they are hostile toward you or they mistreat you and they they you know you don't get the kind of reaction that you should get from people when those people are black and there's a reason for that they've been affected by racism to the extent that nobody would want to be around them. And that makes sense because the system of racism itself produces black people that nobody wants to be around, including other black people. That is the effect of racism itself. That's not just something that happened because black people have this peculiarity about them that makes them into monsters and monstrosities. No, that's a system that does that. So black people, by the nature of being under the system of white supremacy, are made into creatures that nobody wants to be around, including the black people themselves. They don't want to be around each other and can hardly stand themselves. But since you got to be with yourself, there's nowhere else to go. I mean, if you are you, you are you. So what can you do? And so therefore, you turn that outwardly. Because there's nowhere else but to turn it inwardly, in which case you would be suicidal all the time. Which is what black people really are. But we just don't go that extra step. Black people are very suicidal because black people cannot stand themselves. They can't stand other black people and they can't stand themselves. Because when they look at other black people, they see themselves. And they can't stand what they see. Because we have already been made into creatures that are unworthy of being around anything. But the system did that. We weren't born like that. We were all born as little wide-eyed, curious children. But we were turned into monsters and monstrosities. I myself am a monstrosity. The very fact that I'm having this conversation in 2009 proves that I'm a monstrosity. What's a monstrosity? A monstrosity is a creature that is out of sync, out of balance. A person who is in the midst of a whole bunch of problems that can't be solved or apparently aren't being solved. That's a monstrosity. I'm one. Unfortunately, uh, me too, uh, as long as the system of white supremacy exists.
Now, some people have said they've seen some cartoons of my work uh, on the Internet that have been presented, and that uh, it, it pretty well embellishes what I have been trying to say in my textbooks. And uh, to the extent that it does that, well, that has been, from what I understand, some people reported to me a plus, because they didn't understand what I had written very well, but when they saw those cartoons that just repeated what I was saying and attaching my name to it and uh, came right out of the book, the material did, uh, they say that they better understood it. And I can understand that because people are kind of visual, particularly in the year 2021 now, uh, more visual than ever.